Alright, so today we're going to do a short video talking about one of the lesser known HTML elements. Uh, this is the details and summary element. Now, it used to be that if you wanted to make some sort of widget where you had a heading, you clicked on that and it expanded to show something else, some other content, you'd have to use JavaScript to control that. Well, part of HTML5 was this details and summary elements, and it's built right in now. So let's take a look at how to do this, how we can style it, and how we can control it with JavaScript as well. Here's the base element, details. And inside of here, we need to create an element called summary. Just like this. Summary is going to be the heading. You can see the word details showing up here, and that's because I have nothing inside the summary. I haven't added a summary element. I haven't put anything inside there. There. Now with the summary element there, I saved it. Now it's gone because I actually have an empty element here. But we're going to just put something in here. Something for the user to click on, something for the user to read. That's your heading. Now the content that we're going to reveal, I'm just going to put some lorem ipsum text inside there. Save that. Now what we've done here is we've created a widget called details with a clickable area called summary and this paragraph right here is what's going to be revealed so as we click on this you can see it expands and hides all right now how do we style this well uh, the heading itself the text inside of here anything that you would do with that is going to be the same as with any other element but there is this one other piece right here this little arrow if you want to style that there's a couple of styles that we can use a couple of selectors that we can use first of all we're going to talk about with the summary element because that's this piece right here that has this this is like a, a list item it's like the little marker for the list item but there's a new property it's a pseudo element and I don't even see it here in um, VS Code, but there's one called WebKit Details Marker. That is that little triangle. And then we can use the color property to change it. So let's just make it red. So I'll save that. And there we go. So we've changed this. And this is going to work in anything that's sort of WebKit based or Chromium based. Um, doesn't affect anything else, just this little marker right here. And that's going to work. I've got it open here. Let's see, we'll start with uh, Edge. There we are. So we're in Microsoft Edge. You can see that it did apply here. I'll hit refresh. So it is functional here, and we do have that colored marker. We've got Safari, which shows that. I can refresh here again. So there it is, the little marker. Chrome, obviously. And the other one is Firefox. That was the other one. Now, with Firefox, I don't have the red showing up here. If I want to style this, I have to treat it like it is one of the list item markers. And that's what we're going to get with Firefox. So I'll jump back in here into Visual Studio Code. And what we want is marker. So with marker, we can give it a color. It can be anything we want. Uh, I'm just going to make it gold just so it stands out differently. And there it is. There's the gold one with Firefox. Okay, so we've got this for Firefox. And oh, this isn't JavaScript. There we go. And WebKit Details Marker for everything else. All right, now you can add whatever styles you want for the rest of this for the background here, padding, margin, and so on. Uh, it's going to be just like working with any other regular element in HTML. Now, with the JavaScript, what I've done down here at the bottom is I've just I've got my DOM content loaded, so I'm waiting for the whole page to load, and then I'm putting a click listener onto this paragraph right here up inside the main element. So this one right here, this paragraph that's inside of main, that's what I'm targeting down here. So main P the P that is directly inside, so I'm not targeting the one that's inside the details element, just the one up here at the top level. With the click, okay, we can console log to let something happen, um, make that show up in the console. What I want to do here is I want to control that opening and closing through some other means. I'm going to click on here 
to make this thing toggle open and close. So we've got our details element and really all we need to do with our script is this. If we add an attribute open into that details element, here it is, we refresh the page, it's open. Now this can be open equals pretty much anything. We can say it's open equals open, open equals that, whatever it is. If the thing exists, then we're going to have this open. So we'll get rid of that in here. We're just going to control this entirely through JavaScript. We'll come down here and with my debt, oh, we're, we also want to be able to open and close. So we're going to check to see whether or not it is. Start this with this. If it has the attribute open, if it has the attribute open, we know that it's going to be open. If it doesn't, then it's going to be closed. So we're going to right here. If it has it, we want to remove it. So we'll say remove attribute open. And otherwise we're going to say set attribute. Now with set attribute, two things. First one is the name of the attribute. The second one is a value. Now you would think, okay, I just have to set the attribute there, but you do have to give it a value. It doesn't really matter what it is. I can say true. I can give it a string. I'm just going to set open to open. There we have it. Now, as we click here, we're going to be toggling this, opening and closing it as expected. One other way you can do this is with the actual, there's an actual property called open. So we can set that to false or we can set that to true. Just like this. And then we'll comment out these other lines. There we go. So using this property does the exact same thing. There's the open and close. And that's it. That is the details and summary element. So I hope that helps you out. And as always, thanks for watching.